When we return, the computer navigator that keeps pilots on course. Mapping the future of aircraft safety. If you think air traffic is dangerously congested now, the future looks positively frightening. It promises to be a nightmare in the air. But one of air traffic controllers' worst fears, a mid-air collision involving a passenger airliner and a light aircraft, may be avoided in future, thanks to a new navigation system that could make the crowded skies a safer place to fly. We're flying in some of the busiest airspace in the southern hemisphere, with around two and a half thousand traffic movements daily. And that's symptomatic of what's happening around the world. Every year, almost two billion passengers take to the air, creating an air traffic jam that's getting steadily worse. And in just 10 years' time, the volume of that traffic is expected to double, placing immense pressure on pilots who have to be aware not only of their own position, but that of other aircraft around them. There are already a disturbing number of near misses. In Australia alone, an estimated 800 aircraft accidentally stray into controlled airspace each year. In many cases, the air traffic controller cannot communicate with the intruding aircraft because the pilot is on a different radio frequency. Often the accidents that do happen take place in appalling weather conditions where visibility is reduced to zero. And when you're in a light aircraft, there's currently not much in the way of smart technology to help you. Even someone as experienced as Chief Flying Instructor Darren Ward admits there are difficulties. At the moment we've got Parramatta at our left hand window here, which is quite easy. We can see Bankston Airport over to the side, but as we turn around to the left here and head north again, we'll see that there's very little even in good visibility to actually point out where we are at any one time. If we haven't got that visibility, we will have no idea where we are whatsoever. Believe it or not, the navigational tools used by light aircraft pilots haven't changed in decades. They still use a map, a compass and ground-based radio beacons to find their way around. But now there's a new moving map navigation system which uses satellite technology to give pilots a clearer picture of where they are and where they're heading. The moving map is displayed on a small screen mounted in the dashboard and records the plane's movements in real time. Programmed with relevant details of flight paths and the restricted space surrounding airports, it automatically warns the pilot if the aircraft strays off course and into an area where it's not allowed. To test the system, we'd arranged with the air traffic control at Sydney's Kingsford Smith Airport to enter their airspace. The system is now warning us that the aircraft has entered the Sydney controlled airspace. We can actually see the plane well inside that restricted area with the line marking the edge of the boundary. And there's a little warning that comes up at the bottom of the screen that tells us that we are inside that controlled airspace so that the pilot is aware all the time of his position. Until now, technology like this has only been available in large commercial aircraft because of the cost and the ever-critical problem of the extra space and weight needed for more instrumentation, leaving pilots of smaller aircraft with some challenging orienteering to do. Well, we're heading southwest now, looking for the light aircraft lane that will take us back to the airport. The trouble is, up here, there are no street signs or traffic lights. What we're actually looking for is a water tank. That's the point where we turn left and head south. Ah yes, there's the tank. Not what you'd call a major landmark. Imagine trying to find that if you were flying here from another city and weren't familiar with the Sydney terrain. Whereas the moving map neatly guides you back to the airport. The moving map navigation and flight management systems draw on two principal sources for their information. 
global positioning satellites and an altitude encoder. From those, the software can generate an impressive array of information displayed on the screen for the pilot. You can see what the position of the aircraft is, what course it's tracking, what airspace it's in, even what the main radio frequency is in that airspace. It will also warn him if the fuel supplies are getting dangerously low. And in the event of an emergency, such as an engine failure, the system will calculate the distance to the nearest airport and, if it's feasible to get there, will guide the pilot down onto the runway. In this pilot project, the computer driving the navigation system is housed behind the passengers. And the neat part is that a record of the flight is held on floppy disk. That way you can replay the information later and study it in detail. Well, one of the most important things is the fact that it's got voice output. And this means that the system can tell the pilot via his headphones of the direction to steer, and in this case, 333 degrees, and the altitude to maintain. And the big advantage of this is the fact this allows the pilot to spend most of his time looking out avoiding collisions with other aircraft as opposed to burying his head in the instruments which what a lot of, a lot of pilots do who haven't got this type of technology. The system also enables you to see the image scaled up to incorporate larger sections of the country showing your position and available airports. And in bad weather it's programmed to provide standard instrument approach and departure guidance for all listed airports. It can even be connected to a flight simulator for training. As we head rapidly towards a situation where the equivalent of half the world's population travels by air each year, avoiding collisions is going to become harder and harder. Knowing exactly where we are in relation to where we should be will become even more critical to our survival. After the 